Time for your health check and joining me this morning is Dr. David Winter from Baylor Scott and White Health. We chat about, oh, every Friday or so. It's good to see you again, Dr. Winter. And you too, Sonia. Thank you. So we've got gyms reopening on Monday. I got to touch on best practices with you. What are you suggesting to your patients? You know, in those gyms, Sonia, if people huff and puff, and when they do that, they can aerosolize whatever they have. If they've got the virus, that makes me nervous. So if I go to a gym, I'm gonna wear a mask. That's important. Remember, the virus can also last on surfaces, so virus on the hand, no problem. Hand on the face, that's a problem. So wash and disinfect anytime you touch something, somebody else's touch. Keep those rules in mind, and gyms should be safe. Okay, wait, you're gonna wear a mask while you work out at the gym? I just want to, I would just want clarity there. Yes, if I'm in a gym and there are people oh, wow, around okay. me and they're huffing and puffing, I'm going to wear a mask. So I'd just be careful about that because that's the way you aerosolize these particles there and that virus is still very contagious. Okay, so I've read and heard from a lot of people who say, I'm not, look, I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm not afraid of getting sick. Um, one article even mentioned that young men in particular are, are not wearing them because they don't look cool or it's a sign of weakness to them. Um, so what is the best strategy here in order to safeguard the entire population and really kind of get the notion of that into people's minds? Yeah, that's a real problem, Sonia. I think it's a personal decision, but that virus is out there. It's not going down in Dallas County, not in Texas right now. In fact, it's increasing some areas. It's still out there as we start to get out and socialize with people. It's looking to jump to somebody, and that's the way it can jump. So I think it only makes good sense to wear a mask wherever you go. Ten feet away from people, maybe you're fine there. But these masks, I mean, these do wonderful things preventing the spread. There's some controversy and some people writing about that. I don't get the controversy. The mask, the virus in the air, you have this, you breathe in, the, the virus sticks here, doesn't get in your lungs. It's a way to keep you from spreading the virus to yourself and then to other people. So Dr. Winter, I'm also getting a lot of questions about antibody testing. So let's say I'm your patient and I come to you and I say, Dr. Winter, I think I was sick in January or February. Will you give me an antibody test? What are the right questions for me to be asking you as a patient? And then what are you advising? Which antibody tests are better than the others? And also I'm hearing about new ones that are due to come out. I don't think those are widely available just yet, but when do you expect that to happen? Well, first, let me say yesterday, the American Medical Association came out with a formal declaration saying the antibody test should not be done to prove if somebody has immunity or not. Now, what they mean by that is first, the test is not that reliable. It's not positive till either five or 14 days after the virus has been in your body. And for some testing kits, it's not reliable at all. If you have the test and it's positive and you have antibodies in your system, you still may get it again. That's been shown. Ask me another week or another month, we may change your mind about that. But right now, we don't know what to do with that information. So when people say, can I get the test? I say, yes, if you want it. I'm not sure what you're going to do with that. If it's positive, you still need to do all the distancing and all the hand disinfecting and washing that you would before. It doesn't really help me with judging what people need to do or not do if the test is positive or negative. Hmm. Uh, and based on research at this point, like you said, it could change. How similar is this novel coronavirus? acting to other coronaviruses? Do we know yet? Well, there's seven coronaviruses worldwide right now. Four of them are the common cold viruses, and we all have dealt with those for years. We know about those. There are three bad ones. There's SARS that came out a couple years ago, then there was MERS, now this COVID-19. They're all pretty similar, and the difference is a cold virus tends to go into the head. You get a head cold, usually sore throat, stuffy head. They may then go into the lungs. These three bad viruses, though, they tend to go right to the lungs. And when they get down there, they cause major damage to the lungs in some uh, circumstances. Other people have a mild case of it. That's the problem with this virus. These mild cases are people that don't even think they have it with no symptoms, but they do have it because they got exposed somewhere. So these three, are, uh, and the current one now, COVID-19, it's a nasty one. It's here with us. It's not going away. It's hitting, it's, I, think, I think it's sitting there waiting for us to open up and let them expand further into our population. The coronavirus that we have right now is killed 98% of the time in healthy people, but the virus is smart. It knows it's got to jump to somebody else. So it's waiting to jump to somebody else to stay alive in its population. So 
we need to be careful as we open up. I think we need to have all the precautions we had before. Yeah, and especially like you mentioned for those at risk populations. I think that's where we get into a lot of trouble. And Dr. David Winter, as always, thank you so much for your time and insight. We'll check back in with you next week and hey, who knows what more we'll learn between now and then.